the Limbus, like any other tribal communities of the northeastern part of India, are deeply rich and distinctive in traditions. They have their own mythologies, legends, corpus of songs, verses, fables, tales, proverbs, idioms, and other types of oral literature which has been transmitted from one generation to the other generation by words of mouth. Without much further ado, I would now like to narrate the Limbu folktale Yuma Papo. Yuma Papo Once upon a time, two Limbu friends, Papo Hang and Changwa Hang, lived with their grandmothers in a far-flung village. Although of different nature and personalities, Papo Hang and Changwa Hang were very fond of each other and did various activities together like cutting grass, collecting fuel wood and wandering around the village. Papo Hang was a very easy-going person, while Chang Wahang was a cunning one. One ordinary day, during the meet, Papo Hang said to Chang Wahang, My Yuma is very old now. She is never satisfied with the food I prepare for her. Her ungratefulness has been feeling like a burden to me. Listening to Papo Hang complaining, Chang Wahang said, My Yuma is also of the same conduct. She is exactly like your grandmother. He made a suggestion to Papo Hang saying, Let us both take our grandmothers to River Tamor and throw them into the river. They will float to River Koshi and live there. Papo Hang thought it was a good idea and agreed with the suggestion. One evening, both the grandsons decided to take the grandmothers to River Tamor. Papo Hang put his grandmother in a doko, a bamboo basket, and took her to the bank of River Tamor. Meanwhile, Chang Wahang cut the stem of a banana tree, rolled it in a cloth and brought it to the river bank. When the sun was down, they met each other at the bank of River Tamur. Papa Wang threw his grandmother into the river along with the doko, while Chang Wahang, on the contrary, threw the artificial figure that he had made out of the banana tree into the river. The banana tree stem floated in the water and flowed with the currents. But the river could not easily carry away Papo Hang's grandmother. While being tossed around by the river currents, she caught hold of a stone and shouted for help. Chang Wahang said, Look, my grandmother floated away so smoothly. But your grandmother is shouting for help and trying to live. If she continues living, there will be problems and a burden for you. Go and push her into the water. Papo Hang entered the river and took his grandmother's hand off the stone and pushed her down. This time, the river carried away Papo Hang's grandmother. After throwing the grandmothers in the river, both of them returned home. At home, Chang Wahang's grandmother was sitting and coughing. It was only then that Papo Hang realized that Chang Wahang had deceived him. Chang Wahang felt happy after deceiving Papo Hang into killing his grandmother. One night, Papo Hang dreamt of his grandmother. In his dream, the grandmother said, Grandson, I reincarnated in the form of a papongna, limbuni fish. Chang Wahang deceived you. After you threw me down the river, I was carried away to the Koshi River. I have taken rebirth in the form of a fish. Recognize me as papongna. Let no descendants of the Papohang eat Papongna. If they eat, I will feel unhappy. I will curse them. Because of this curse, they will have disabled children or will have no children at all. They will have wounds and boils in their body. So the descendants of Papohang family should consider Papongna to be the equal counterparts as their grandmothers. Since then, Papongnas have stand-like signs on its crest three lines on its lips, and kurpa-like, a kind of a knife sign on its back. Papohang Limbus consider Papongna to be their grandmother and avoid consuming it till today. Thank you.